Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and this is not Spawn Year. It's day six of my comic review video day calendar, and it's a very special episode of Not Spawn Year, because today we're going to take a look at a PSA, a thing I figured we'd do at least one of this year. I have a few of these oddities in my collection, and honestly, I don't know how I ended up with this one. I kind of remember seeing it while going through one of my either big random lots that I've bought online or a local collection I bought out years ago. I don't remember which. That's how I amass a lot of single-issue comics, uh, where... I'll buy out, you know, three, four, five thousand comics at once, or I'll buy long boxes online, and I'll sell what I want, and I'll keep the rest, and I used to do a lot of that, and so I know how I got this. I don't know why I kept it. Uh, there are some really weird things I've got that I had to uh, hang on to just because of the strangeness of them, like... How was there, maybe we'll deal with this later in the year, uh, how was there a Radio Shack comic exclusive to that store that has, uh, that's Supergirl in the late 80s? It's very strange. Anyway, this is Real Heroes number four, which should probably be titled fictional superheroes dealing with real world problems. I don't know why it's called real heroes. There's not a real hero in this issue. They're all fictitious and the closest to a real person that you have here in that he's dealing with but I mean we also do this in regular Marvel comics I guess uh, that he's dealing with real world problems is the villain of the issue who gets carted away to jail at the end even though we're supposed to sort of sympathize with him. So I mean there's really there's no real heroes here. This is not to be confused with the image series, which I know next to nothing about, that came out years and years later, also called Real Heroes, which I think is about like firefighters and policemen and stuff. Uh, this was, as you see on the cover, put out by Pizza Hut. There were only four of these, and again, this is the fourth of them. There's not a number on the front, but it is indeed number four, and I'll show you the covers a little bit later of the other three, which I've not read and the odd hodgepodge of characters that are thrown together for those issues, just like with this one, and the heavy-hitting, topical, uh, real-world problems that those are also dealing with. This one is all about the dangers of cigarettes and nicotine addiction, which was a, in, in just drugs in general, uh, a real big topic in this period. Uh, with dealing with children, a lot of, uh, for lack of, of, of a better word, kind of propaganda, uh, and like, like I said, PSAs and after-school specials and commercials, and uh, a lot of things working really hard to try to keep children away from drugs and addiction and off the streets and not getting into gangs and all of that kind of thing, and it, much of it never really felt very effective to me and I think a lot of kids and a lot of adults at that time. Uh, it seemed like the government and companies that maybe very often had their hearts in the right place and were trying to really solve a problem were just a little bit tone deaf and out of touch with the youth and didn't really understand what would resonate with them and uh, kind of famously um, it's talked about a lot that, for instance, the D.A.R.E. program maybe got more kids into drug culture than uh, got them to stay away from it. Uh, the whole Say No to Drugs campaign, um, it, it, it felt like at the time, and you know, I've, I've heard horror stories and people kind of still talk about this, that... You know, not to suggest that children shouldn't be educated on this stuff, because of course they should be, but the way it was handled uh, kind of made a lot of kids more curious about drugs, maybe, um, arguably, than it actually got them to stay away from them. And you had uh, a lot of other programs with, uh, like, recycling and various uh, environmental issues that always just felt really heavy-handed and preachy and trying too hard, protesting too much. See, it's kind of the learning is fun thing. See, kids, uh, learning is fun, not doing bad things is fun, and a lot of the stuff 
wasn't fun at all. Th- this is, but for all the wrong reasons, and we'll get into it. So, obviously, I don't want to be too flippant about an actual, um, you know, difficult topic, and uh, there are things, you know, at, at that time... Certainly, the world has changed, and it's kind of surreal going back to this as a relic after, uh, you know, cigarette culture has uh, morphed and evolved as much as it has in our uh, in our country and um, in, you know, a lot of the world at large, I guess. Uh, I, there are some things in this that I actually was kind of impressed with and liked about the, the how strangely maturely uh, the topic is discussed, but, um, there's also a lot of goofy in it, and it will be kind of fun to talk about, uh, but it's, um, it's talked about a lot here that this is a, like, really complicated problem that there's no good solution to, and that at the end of the day, I. it's the world is not fair and it's hard to say who to blame because of infrastructure so uh you've got a kid that is uh angry with cigarette companies and with the with uh, you know cigarette culture and with the stores that sell cigarettes because his mother got addicted to cigarettes and got lung cancer and died and he is blaming the store owners for it, uh, who, at least the one that he attacks at the beginning of this, that he blows up this guy's store, uh, doesn't really care who he sells cancer sticks, as this kid calls it, just just the most 90s possible kid with a backwards hat and the a long uh, bleached hair, uh, but this store owner doesn't care who he sells uh, cigarettes to as long as he's making a buck. And this kid uh, says, you know, that's not fair. That's unacceptable. Uh, you are part of the problem. And I think the point of the comic is uh, there is truth to that, but you're not going to actually solve the problem by just getting rid of all the stores that sell cigarettes uh, because those store owners don't actually control who wants the cigarettes and who is selling the cigarettes. They're a cog in a larger machine. So, and and this is where I think it's handled oddly somewhat maturely. I do kind of, there's a couple of things. I do kind of like that uh, the kid is sympathetic enough where, like, I, I sort of see where he's coming from and there's some truth to it. That the problem is attitude uh that at the very least this guy should be carding people that come in and are young and are buying cigarettes of course and he's not doing that because he just doesn't care who gets cigarettes uh because he is making a buck at the same time if he was um you know less crass and callous about it uh He doesn't really have a lot of control, especially if he's in, like, I don't know if he owns the store, but especially if he's just the guy behind the register at a, uh, you know, a a store that's part of a larger corporation uh, of convenience stores because he wouldn't have any control over what he's selling. So, like, should you not take the job because there is one thing being sold there or a few things being sold there that you don't think... I uh, should be, and so you're becoming part of a problem. I mean, there's only so many jobs to go around, and it would be difficult to be uh, consistent with that and to, you know, be able to make a living and support your family. Who knows if this guy has a wife and kids or if it's just him, etc. And so I do like that it, it's uh, it's dealing with the the complexity of all of that and the, the lesson at the end of the day is life's not fair. Uh, it, it sucks and it's unfortunate, but it's true. And so there's a uh, kind of, there's a sobriety to that message that if we have to do this messagey comic book uh, that we're giving to kids at Pizza Hut, how excited are they going to be to be preached at about the evils of cigarettes while they're trying to eat their breadsticks? But if it has to be, uh, you know, if this has to exist, I guess I appreciate that about it. Uh, but I also like that it's not 
the uh, typical kind of heavy, it is heavy handed, but it's not the typical uh, heavy handed, this kid starts to smoke cigarettes and uh, like has a shattering disillusionment about how not cool they are. Uh, Spider-Man has a line at the end about how the cigarettes are not cool the way they're they're being advertised, and that part of the problem is that they're they're glorified in advertising. But I really expected to pop this open, and it would be about a kid that thinks cigarettes are cool, or like a typical peer pressure thing. And I was really shocked that it's actually about a kid who hates cigarettes himself, who is the age, or maybe a little bit older that a lot of this kind of stuff is being sold to in trying to get them not to look at, to, to get cigarettes. And he's actually the one, or, or at least one of the people in the wrong in the comic. That, that, that's kind of unusual. I kind of appreciated that. Uh, real quick, I'll mention this is written by Evan Schlolnick with art by Tom Morgan. And uh, those two names, like I said, I, I didn't recognize right away. Schlolnick, uh, I looked, his name is really hard to say. Schlolnick, I looked up and he was more on the editorial side with Marvel and had kind of some smaller pet projects that he worked on here and there. He would pitch little things that would get in the uh th that would get published some but he didn't work on any really big books uh he did work on iron man at the time iron man was uh, i don't want to say a b-list character but not one of the big selling titles at the time even though he's you know one of the biggest most popular superheroes uh, in media ever at this point this was a different time in 1994 your big uh, heavy hitting marvel characters were spider-man and wolverine and ghost rider and punisher and guys like that it was all about the uh, anti-heroes and the uh, the the kind of the kind of darker, rougher around the edges, uh, kinds of stuff, and that's why, like I talked about yesterday, uh, Spider Man very often, even if the character himself didn't have that attitude, his book certainly did, and so uh, this is a really weird set of characters th to throw together, obviously, and one of the reasons I grabbed it because it was just such a weird mix, and I wondered why. I uh, so this writer Schlolnick was working on. Uh, what is that team? New Warriors at the time, and Firestar is one of the characters in that, so that's why she's here. He also wrote on Iron Man. The artist uh, drew Iron Man. Maybe they worked together. I'm not sure. Uh, he and Tom Morgan, probably so, and then, of course, uh, you've got to have you know a more popular A-list character at that point, so there's Spider-Man. Also, thematically, these characters seem to be chosen uh, because of how they connect to the uh, plot. And so you've got uh, Firestar because she... Well, and you've also got Human Torch here, too, I should mention. He wraps around to the back, uh, so it is the four of them. So you've got Human Torch and Firestar because they're fire characters, and they're going to put out a big fire in this. And cigarettes, you need fire to... to to start them, to use them. So you got fire characters here. And then Iron Man is here because he used to have an addiction problem. And Spider-Man is here because uh, he's a teenager. Or actually, at this point, he's not, I guess. But we still think of him as like a teenage superhero. So maybe he can kind of relate to this character at some point. Because, I mean, everybody's been a teenager at some point. But Spider-Man started there. And there's this shoehorned in thing toward the end where he talks about how he worked really hard to help Aunt May give up her cigarette addiction, which may have been in Spider-Man comics at some point, but I don't know about it, so I don't know if that's made up or if that actually really happened. But I digress. So, uh, one of the weirdest things in this is the way those characters all come together, because Spider-Man happens upon this fire at this convenience store that the kid has, has started. Uh, let me backtrack for a second and say, I don't know what the kid's plan was exactly when he walked in. Apparently, he's trying to tear down every store that used to sell cigarettes to his mother. Like, that's going to solve anything. And he, uh, he walks in, and he tests the guy behind the counter. He says, uh, I, I want this kind of cigarette. And 
the guy rings him up, and then this kid, who looks a lot like a teenage resurrection man, this kid goes, what, you're not even going to card me uh, when you're selling the cancer sticks? And again, the guy behind the counter is like, nah, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, it sells the same way to everybody. And then this guy gets pissed and starts, you know, blowing the store up. So if the guy had passed the test, what would he have done? Because his mother, maybe she started smoking when she was a teenager, but we're not told that. So the issue isn't about a teenager uh, that was being sold cigarettes before she was old enough. So, like, legally she shouldn't have, have even been able to purchase them. And that's why she died. It, it's not that. She was buying them as an adult and died. I don't know how far back it goes. We're not told. So... Um, I don't know why he tests the store owner like that, uh, except just to kind of surprise us. And then the other baffling thing is that he's got these energy powers that are never talked about. Uh, they don't have anything to do with his obsession with taking down, uh, you know, cigarette sales at large, except that, I don't know, they're sort of, uh, like fiery powers, I guess they're more like energy, being like crackling energy. So it doesn't even really have much to do at all with cigarettes themselves. And he doesn't have a tragic backstory related to his mother or cigarettes that has anything to do with his powers that we're told. He just has powers. Okay, that's kind of random. And then we get our foursome together. And uh, Spider Man kind of wills this all to happen in this really contrived, convenient way where he goes, man, I really wish an Avenger would show up or the Fantastic Four, that'd be good. Or, and he, and he says this, I'd even take the new Warriors at this point. And then, a second and a half later, a member of each of those teams shows up and Spider-Man's like, wow, that's amazing. I was just thinking about you guys, he says. Now I realize that this is just a 16-page, uh, and I don't know why it can't be a full 20 or 22 pages, but okay. Uh, this is a real quick 16-page comic that is, uh, like, ostensibly there to entertain children, but is in fact trying to teach them a very important moral lesson in the most obvious and heavy-handed way possible. So, and, and again, like, it's more mature about it than I expected it to be, but there's a lot of, like, almost looking directly out of the panel trying to tell kids not to do things they're not supposed to and why it's bad. And so it's convenient that you have two fire characters because we're dealing with fire and a, a guy that used to have an addiction problem and also that it's these characters from teams that Spider-Man just mentioned, like he willed the whole thing to happen. This also has my new favorite Tony Stark line of dialogue in comics that I'm gonna say all the time now because it's hysterical and I love it. So Spider-Man starts delegating. He's trying to lead this new makeshift team of four that he somehow conjured into existence and he says Iron Man I could use your help with a very powerful juvenile delinquent in there and Iron Man says and you see it on your screen right like I'm not making this up all right web slinger but I'll warn you right now I don't believe in spanking that's fantastic uh, Iron Man does not believe in spanking and I just want to see what he's like as a father. This suit is uh, th that Iron Man's got here, and I'm not a big Iron Man guy, so I don't know what the number is, the mock whatever. Uh, but this is a real nostalgic suit to me. For for me, I had, uh, you know, I, I didn't read a lot, of, a lot of Iron Man when I was a kid, but I had a novel that was about. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was Iron Man and. I think th the Thunderbolts were maybe involved, uh, or it was, maybe I'm conflating two different books, but it had something to do with AIM. I think it was called, like, Operation AIM or something, and it had some illustrations uh, in the in the margins, and uh, it was this suit. And I always wondered what the point of the little doohickeys on the legs were it seemed like they, they looked like they would pop off and you could plug things in into his legs uh but anyway spider-man 
at the end, uh, with with Iron Man's help, mostly convinces this kid that uh, destroying the places that sell cigarettes is not the answer, and that he is just going into what he calls a senseless rage, and that these people are uh, more or less innocent, and that it's a you know, larger issue that can't be solved so easily. And then Iron Man looks, again, almost directly at the audience. Uh, and says, because smoking is so widespread, and it's openly advertised and sold, there's no one person you can blame. Again, relic of another time. Like, things really have changed since then. Obviously, those things are still true. Like, you still have some cigarette advertising, although it's not as prevalent as it was then. And it's also just not as popular and not glorified in the way it was. Some of that, of course, is because of legislation, and it's maybe, not to get too political, it's maybe a, a chicken and the egg sort of thing, where it's like, does some of that legislation happen because uh, people are, a lot of people uh, are, are starting to want to see, um, you know, cigarette culture change, and it's becoming less popular. Uh, it, it, people are starting to worry about just how much cancer they're seeing, and secondhand smoke uh, started to be, to be a real big deal in the early 2000s, uh, especially. Uh, or is it the other way uh, more, where you get that legislation and then it stops being as popular and widespread because it's harder to smoke it in public places? I don't know. You be the judge. Probably a little bit of both. Uh, column A, column B. Uh, but he says... Who do you go after? The tobacco farmers, the cigarette companies, the store owners, or even the Puffin Bird himself, this made-up cigarette company, Puffin Cigarettes. And this is the last line of the comic. Spider-Man says, I'm not certain, Shellhead, but I do know one thing. It sure isn't cool to me. And the whole thing hasn't really been about how uncool cigarettes are so much as uh, about like how to deal with the problem of their being so uh, you know widespread and glorified. So th that last panel is much more what I expected the whole book to be about. So anyway, uh, th this this is a this is a real silly kind of odd thing to expect you know a kid to be enjoying while he's eating his pizza at Pizza Hut, and there were like I said three more of these. So Real Heroes number one. I uh, I guess it has something to do with anger management, maybe? Uh, if your hatred and rage don't destroy you, then the Dromedan will. Okay. And then there was... Uh, okay, I guess I have uh, not very high-res images for these. Uh, but then the second one had uh, Spider... Or, pardon me, Captain America and Daredevil... And I don't even know who else. Is that the Falcon back here? Probably not. I'm not sure. Uh, something to do with Wasp, but a battle with Hydra. And this looks more like just, you know, a standard 90s comic. I don't even know what this one was about. And then you had one with Wolverine fighting Hulk, a classic matchup. And I, I'm not getting a good sense from uh, either of those uh, uh, what the actual... Um, you know, real world issues they were dealing with were, but uh, and so I wonder if th any of those three were as kind of in your face about uh, their their problem as this was. But anyway, so that's Real Heroes number four. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. As always, sure appreciate it, and I will see you again tomorrow with another one. Uh, don't smoke, kids. It's a filthy habit. See you later. Bye, everybody.